Electronic paper. A display technology that looks like paper. It's seen a lot in stores, sometimes in an office, and very sometimes in consumer products like these. Including the latest color technologies. But we begin with this broken e-reader. Now I hear you wonder, why would you get a broken one? Well, to show you something. Here I peel off the electronic ink layer. This action changes the static charge, which changes the color from white to black. It's the electrode display that broke. This part of the display can change the static charge, and thus the color of the display. Unfortunately, the anti-glare layer prevented me from getting decent super macro shots. So I got this nice e-paper clock. Why don't we see that more often? And a little thermometer. I think this is an excellent application of e-paper. I wouldn't mind a thermostat with an e-paper display. But more importantly, these do not have an anti-glare layer, meaning I can go super macro. Every half hour these displays do a full refresh. It looks like color-changing styrofoam. And that's because, just like styrofoam, these are little balls trapped between the display. Let's slow down the speed some more. So how can these little balls change color? They contain black and white particles with an opposite electrostatic charge. Because of that, they swap position when the electrode display swaps charge. And that's all that's happening here. Quite simple, actually. But please don't ask me how they make those little balls. There is less than one millimeter in the picture right now. These are the first electronic books with color e-ink. Often advertised for reading comic books. And there's a reason for that. Even though it's brighter than any reflective LCD and doesn't have a viewing angle, real paper completely outperforms it. The display is more gray than white and the colors are dim and dark. So only comics look somewhat decent on this. There is a front light to make the display brighter, but then you're better off getting any backlit LCD. Only in bright daylight, this particular e-ink display would be the better choice. But realistically, it's not much more than a gimmick. And I haven't even talked about the terrible software. But um, time to go super macro again. Unfortunately, here too, the anti clair diffusion layer spoils the fun. But still, we can see that they used a color grid of red, green and blue. Below it is just a regular black and white e-paper, which with some effort can be recognized here. The trick is that the color grid is perfectly aligned with the pixel grid of the electrode display. The transparency they left in between the colors is probably to improve the brightness. 
And probably also because the little e-paper balls aren't pixel perfect. It's not the future of display technology. This is more promising. A color e-paper that uses white and translucent cyan, magenta and yellow. Without a color grid. Just like print on paper. Only black is missing. Arranging those colors takes some time. The refresh rate is 2 frames per minute. It can show 7 different colors, but not pure cyan or magenta. And the color rendition can vary, especially when it's hot. To display a photo, a diffusion pattern has to be used that uses those 7 colors. But the first e-readers using this technology can show shades of these 7 colors and have much faster response times and are outrageously priced. Super Micro Time Brace for a flashing screen Now the pigments are contained within a honeycomb instead of little balls. The pigments have different response times. So by alternating the static charts, the four colors can be rearranged. This process isn't perfect, which makes it beautiful at the microscopic scale. This display also has a diffusion layer on top, which makes it very hard to get decent super macro shots. Here you can see the three translucent pigments rearranged in a single cell. By cutting away frames in between flashes, we can see the pigments in motion. This might be the most analog digital technology. The track you hear now is my latest single, Micro Galaxies. Even though this display has better colors and brightness than the color grid version, it's still no match for actual paper. And yes, I made those cartoons about 25 years ago. The original invention dates from the 70s, at Xerox Park. It was kind of reinvented in the 90s, and the company E-Ink has the patents now. And I think that's the reason e-paper products are still so expensive. Anyway, thanks for watching and I hope to see you soon. There's a bunch of links in the description.